Welcome, everybody. It is the premiere episode of Duncan on Joe, brought to you by and presented to you by Club Fantasy FFL. I'm your host, Evan, the great L. Bushman. Welcome in to the premiere episode, where each week we will have a contestant come in to see if they can dunk on Joe. And the Joe I'm talking to is about Joe. Let's go, Dubs. Pepe, what's going on, Joe? How's it going tonight? What's up, man? I had to make my name this just for Steve. It was I know. Just for I Steve. like it. I like it. Like it. And joining us is the very first guest who will try to dunk on Joe is Steve Lawson. Welcome to the show, Steve. What's going on, guys? Thank you for having me. I am really excited to uh, just body up Joe today. So, so I'll give everybody a little bit of a uh, little bit of context about the show. This show is all about dunking on Joe, and each week we will give you guys a topic to dunk and debate to see if you can dunk on Joe. And after each contestant gives five to ten minutes to kind of just just to kind of state their case, we will put this up on Twitter, and the fans will decide who wins that week. And if Steve, if, if Steve, if you win this week, can come back on the show and gloat all you want on Joe. And if Joe, if if people like you. And if they think you win, you can gloat on the show next week before we get into your second guest. I, so, am, I am buying Twitter votes. I'm just letting you know now. Okay. <laughs> so before we do the the topic, and of course, we, we kind of already know what our topic is for this week, I will bring up the coin of destiny. <laughs> and since, Steve, you are our guest today, I want you to pick heads or tails. Uh. You know what? I'll go with Tails. I was brought up in that wow. Tails Never Fails era. So, All right, here we go. Heads or Tails? The Queen no. of Destiny. Come on, Heads. It is Heads. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. It is I'll Heads. It. Joe, will you go first or do you want to go second? Nah, let me go first. Let me go first. This is my show. I might as well talk first. It's about me, right? You know, The oh. only <laughs> win he's going to get today. The only win yeah. he's going to get today. <laughs> <laughs> All right, everybody, and uh, since we now know who's going to go first, our topic of discussion is does David Montgomery have RB1 upside? Joe. Yeah. Let's go. Yeah. Yeah, he does. I mean, let's let's look at it this way. His average draft position is around 35. Today we did something for Mock It Like It's Hot, and he ended up at 312. So you look at him and you're like, okay, is he old? Is he young? Like, he's 24. But, okay, Khalil Herbert's there. Is he old? Is he young? He's also 24. So that makes no difference. There's nothing to worry about there. Then let's go into the carries per season. 2019, he had 242. 2020, he had 247. 2021, he had 225. A little bit less, but he was ninth most in the league last year. And I know what people are going to say. Well, all those carries don't matter. So what about the red zone? So let's break that down. We have Jonathan Taylor, who was in a world of his own with 85. But then let me go through the rest of this list here. We have Austin Eckler, 46. Dalvin Cook, 45. Sony Michelle, 45. Damian Harris, 44. Antonio Gibson, 44. And lo and behold, David Montgomery, 43. So he's top 10 in the red zone for carries in 2021. Then you look at the Chicago Bears and you get the question of, oh, it's a new coach. It's a new offensive system. They're not going to use them as much. Hold on. The Chicago Bears only have six players that had a target from last season on the team this year. Darnell Mooney, Cole Komet, David Montgomery, Khalil Herbert, Daz Newsome, and Isaiah Coulter, who I'm going to be honest, I have no idea who that person even is. But that means that they're going to have only a few people that Justin Fields is comfortable with from the past. Somebody he's dealt with last year, somebody that he feels comfortable with. And for a quarterback, and especially a young quarterback, that's extremely important. That's going to make him feel comfortable. That's going to keep him safe. They're going to hand that ball off. And let's not forget that he is on a contract year. So you can run him into the ground. And I'm sure everybody on Twitter has heard me say this about Josh Jacobs, Miles Sanders, Saquon Barkley, all these running backs up for contract. You run him into the ground and then you move on because the way to win in the NFL is to have a cheap running back room that is efficient. So you're not going to pay him next year. So why not run him into the ground like the Marco Murray with the Cowboys years ago? Now, we're looking at a running back who's always underappreciated. He's kind of a boring name. That draft exhaustion is real. And during the last two seasons, he's averaged 19.6 touches per game. He is projected to average around 20 this year. He's just somebody that's going to get a lot of touches. So I looked on Fantasy Pros and I said, where does Fantasy Pros have him in the consensus? He is the top of tier four. He's number 16. He's behind Alvin Kamara, who's nine. Is he playing a full season? Who knows? 
All right, I'll give you Leonard Fournette. I'll give you Aaron Jones. That's totally fine. Nick Chubb, he also doesn't catch passes. So kind of in the same boat for me there. But Nick Chubb has Kareem Hunt there. And we don't know who the quarterback's going to be. Is it going to be Brissett? Is it going to be Baker? Is it going to be Deshaun Watson? We got Javante Williams. He's got a 50-50 split with Melvin Gordon. But that 50-50 split is going to get diminished because they have Russell Wilson now who can throw passes and can actually move the ball through the air. So they're not going to have as many runs as they used to have under Vic Fangio. Then you got Saquon Barkley, who you don't know what you're getting, if he's healthy, if he's not, what's the offense going to do under Dable? It's a whole question in New York. And then you have James Conner. Can he even match the amount of touchdowns he had last year? Those people are in front of him. And David Montgomery, according to Fantasy Pros, has one of the easiest schedules for a running back. Now, I know strength of schedule isn't everything, but it is something. So with all these stats and everything with the strength of schedule and the amount of touches in the red zone and the fact that they can run him into the ground and then just move on, I think he's getting slept on just a little too much this season. And he comes right on time. Good for you, Joe. Wow. All right, Steve. You've heard his case. Let's hear your rebuttal. All right. So I'm going to start this rebuttal by saying you absolutely could run David Montgomery into the ground. The problem is they already have. David Montgomery last season averaged 3.8 yards per carry on 225 attempts. That is eerily similar to a probably one of the most disappointing fantasy seasons of all time in 2019 Todd Gurley, where he had 223 attempts and averaged 3.8 yards per carry. Listen to the similarities on this. Todd Gurley, 223 for 857. David Montgomery, 225 for 849. Both of them averaged 3.8 yards per carry. That was the time where we had said Todd Gurley was done done he was no longer a good running back he wasn't even a starting running back in the nfl atlanta took the shot and it showed that he wasn't it just wasn't it anymore the time for david montgomery to be good came and went we thought he was going to be something more than he was we thought he would break tackles at an elite rate and catch at an elite rate and do all these things he just isn't that guy in his career for three seasons now he's averaged 3.7 yards per carry 4.3 yards per carry and then 3.8 yards per carry This man does not break tackles. This man is not fast enough to be a starting running back in the NFL. Let's look at his catches. He caught 25 passes, 54 passes, 42 passes. He's averaging about seven yards per reception. He doesn't have the elite upside speed to be an NFL running back. He's not ever going to be in that upper tier. Give me James Conner. Give me Miles Sanders. Give me guys like that who have that burst that can bust those big plays. You'll find one, maybe two from Montgomery, but it, it's just not happening anymore. He's not that explosive and where you want to start him, where you want to see that. An RB1 has to be a guy that you are confident is going to get you touchdowns and is going to get you chunk plays. That's what makes an RB1. And then the receiving totals on top of that. David Montgomery has never crossed double digit touchdowns, not once. It doesn't happen. And now the coaching staff that invested a lot in David Montgomery gave him that workhorse role. They're gone. They're gone. And a good coach is going to look and say, David Montgomery is not our guy. He's not a starter. Khalil Herbert can do the exact same thing as David Montgomery. So you're not going to roll Montgomery out there and just slam him into the line 20 times when Justin Fields is there and he can take over that offense. Darnell Mooney's there, and he can take over that receiving core. Cole Komet's going to have a breakout year. This is Justin Fields' QB1 season, and it's going to be in spite of and not because of David Montgomery. It's just not there. I've always looked at speed as a big indicator of running backs. It was a big reason why I was out on Clyde Edwards-Hilaire coming out of college. They're slow. When you're a slow running back in a league where linebackers are now running 4 440s, you cannot be successful. You cannot make it to that second level. And that's what David Montgomery is now. He's slow. So I just don't see it happening. All right. Steve has stated his case. If David Montgomery is an RB1, let me ask the both of you. If you, Steve, I know you're, 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 you're stating your case that he's not an RB1. Where in the draft are you really going to take David Montgomery in a PPR you know, half point, half point PPR league. Where are you going to take David David Montgomery in a, in a draft? 
I'm not. Oh. He's not going to make it to where I take him. Okay. Like, okay. like he's not going to make it to where I'm going to take him. Sixth round, seventh round, eighth round. Oh wow. Yeah. Wow. Where, where do you where do you take Kareem Hunt? Right I now, take, where do you take Kareem Hunt? Before that. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so somewhere before that. <laughs> somewhere before what? Like the fifth round, maybe. Yeah. See, like, I think like we were saying, I said in my thing, like, mock it like it's hot. He landed at 312, and I like that because he was right around, and I, I'm just trying to remember. I think it was J.K. Dobbins and Brees Hall. And I feel the same way about J.K. Dobbins as I do with David Montgomery, and I like him right there at the end of the third, beginning of the fourth. And I think I'm getting an, a guy as my RB2 that can be an RB1 with whoever I pair him with. Personally, I don't trust the Bears' offense whatsoever. So in my opinion, David Montgomery is not an <laughs> RB1. But hey, that's just my opinion. I'm the host of the show. What I want everybody to do now is make sure to go to Club Fantasy FFL and cast your vote. Who won the debate today? Was it either Joe, who was for, or Steve, who was it against? So make sure to go to Club Fantasy FFL and cast your vote today. If Joe wins, he gets to come on the show and gloat. And of course, if he doesn't, he's probably going to come on the show and bitch and moan that this thing is rigged. <laughs> Yep. Everybody on everybody on Twitter hates him, so make sure to go cast your yep. vote and make sure to go to Club Fantasy FFL and subscribe. Hit the follow button on all the social media platforms at Club Fantasy FFL. Guys, it was a great show. Thanks for coming on, Steve. Just a couple, a couple of closing notes. Make sure to go to uh, to uh, Club Fantasy FFL. We've got a new episode coming up, no pun intended, where Joe, Josh, and Ryan will take a look inside the Chicago Bears, funny enough, the Atlanta Falcons, <laughs> and the Denver Broncos to give you a leg up during your fantasy summer drafts. And speaking of drafts, be sure to subscribe to our YouTube page so you get notified about the latest episode of my other show, Mock It Like It's Hot. We have new guests every week Every week, where me and Ryan guide you through different fantasy football drafts and strategies to think about while you understand how to use your ADP and your, to your advantage. And every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, new articles drop on clubfantasyffl.com, spotlighting one player from each of the teams we break down on Wednesday's NPI. If you're following us on social media, Club Fantasy FFL on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram, you'll never miss an article. If not, go and do so now. Guys, so thanks for coming on the show. Joe, we will see you next week with a brand yep. new guest that's going to debate you. Guys, this has been a brand new episode of Dunkin' on Joe. We will see you next week.